Welcome to the podcast, Speaking to Influence, Communication Secrets of the C-Suite. I'm Dr. Laura Sacola, your host, founder of Vocal Impact Productions and author of Speaking to Influence, Mastering Your Leadership Voice. Today, I wanna to do something a little bit different. We're now about six months into the world of social distancing, work from home and virtual everything. And it is starting to sink in that even God willing, sooner rather than later, even when we can go back to meeting in person, the fact is that virtual events from meetings to conferences to whatever else is here to stay. It's more cost efficient, it's more time efficient than traveling unnecessarily. And you can open the availability to more and more people when you make it virtually available as well. You have more reach. But the problem with that is that as we are now seeing that this is going to be a new normal, basically moving on for eternity, the standard has to change. Because up until this point, most people have finally sort of accepted the fact that we're on video all the time, that we're talking to each other virtually, but we, it's been sort of good enough the standard for being on video, for talking to each other through these kinds of media, we can't just be jerry-rigging it, getting that, oh, it's good enough. At least I turned on my, my camera, I turned on my audio, I logged in, it's fine, right? Well, fine and good enough. That to me sounds like C minus. C minus did not get you to where you are today. That is not the brand, the quality that makes people want to work with you, work with your company. And that's not the brand that we can afford to project and to, to transform our company into a good enough kind of institution. The new expectation from your audience, no matter who they are, subconsciously is if you're not excellent on video, then I just don't think you're excellent, period. You don't seem excellent. So if this is what you're demonstrating to me that you make yourself look and sound good enough, why would I trust that the quality of the work that you'll do for me will be even better? It just doesn't work that way. Now, for the last six months or so, I've been doing trainings every week, sometimes two, three, four times every week. Uh, my program is Confidence, Presence, and Influence on Video. And it's all about how to look and sound your best and how to maximize engagement and get results in these virtual events that we have. Uh, and it's funny, I, I got a, a call a little while ago from a client of mine who's the uh, chief strategy officer at a big healthcare institution. And he said, I had just done a training about a week previous with his whole team. And he called me back and he said, uh, Laura, I just thought I would let you know, I thought you'd appreciate this. You know, after your training, I've been sending my, my people out to do trainings in other, and presentations in other departments. And he said, I just got a call from one of, the, uh, one of my peers, so another one of the, the C-level executives who said, hey, what happened? What'd you do to your people? Why are they so good? something's off. And it's not just that they weren't, but it's that nobody's good at this. Nobody's supposed to be good at this. So they're trying to figure out what, what magic beans this guy had been giving that made everybody suddenly so effective. And it was just about these trainings. And the fact is, it's not rocket science. It's a lot of little things that you just don't realize are necessary and that you do have complete and total control over. And when you're able to put these things together, they make a massive, massive difference because the whole is greater than the sum of each individual part. So today, since this podcast is virtual and it's primarily all audio, if you're listening to it on iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify or something else, unless of course you're viewing it on YouTube, which is also terrific. Everybody knows that there is uh, on my YouTube channel, there is the Speaking to Influence podcast um, listing uh, and uh, playlist, I should say. Since this is primarily audio for everybody else out there, today I wanna to share with you three key steps to sounding excellent in the virtual world. And I do reference some of these ideas in the training in passing, but today I want to share a lot of extra, deeper insights with you instead. And of course, if you are interested in the full training for your organization or just for you personally, you can send me an email at laura at vocalimpactproductions.com. So here we go. Number one, the sound quality 
the physical sound quality is crucial. And the sad fact is that most people's sound quality is awful. You absolutely must upgrade. You don't need to spend a truckload of money, but you do need to invest some. Here's why. Right now, yes, I'm on my very high-end podcaster mic, but you don't have to go super high-end. Even something as much as a $40 or $50 headset can be much better. Now, listen, I'm going to demonstrate to you. Right now, you're hearing me talk. This is my good mic. This is my standard podcaster microphone. But if I just shift gears and if I am just shifting from being able to use my audio in that's embedded into the computer and what would otherwise come normally with Zoom or with some other program, this is what's going to happen. You're going to hear a very big difference. Ready? Here we go. This is, I'm going to change gears. One, two, three. Okay. Now you're listening to me on the embedded internal microphone. The one that comes with my otherwise very expensive uh, Mac, iMac desktop, 20 something inch monitor. It's about two years old. It's supposed to be good stuff. But clearly, as you can tell, the sound is not. So, and at best, this is what most people sound like. Now, I'm going to shift back over to my other good mic because, heck, I don't want to sound like this and you don't want to listen to it. Okay, now we're back into the other uh, into the other microphone system. But that last piece is critical, right? Because you sat there and thought to yourself, as soon as it shifted over, well, I don't want to listen to that. Now, think about when you're on a call with multiple people. One of two things is likely to happen. Either you sound like this, but everybody else sounds like this, in which case you sound light years better. And when you speak, because it's so crystal clear, everybody else wants to listen to you and is, is, is on a reflex level more compelled to listen to you than to everyone else. Or on the flip side, the worst possibility happens, which is that some others might sound like this, but you sound like this. And if you sound like this, then when you start to talk, people are more likely to tune you out because they just can't be bothered trying to listen in and figure out really what you're saying. It's actively unpleasant. And that's an instinctive deterrent from having to focus. Now that focus is also difficult because, I mean, how many of you have heard of Zoom fatigue? Right. Zoom fatigue is something that I think a lot of people just generically attribute to being tired of being on video, tired of being in the virtual world all the time. But it's literal fatigue, Zoom or, and I love Zoom, but Zoom or, or Teams or uh, WebEx or GoToMeeting or BlueJeans or whatever platform it is, video conference fatigue is because when you have to listen to somebody or many people talk like this over and over and over again, your brain is concentrating. It's forced to focus so much more intently. And when you have to do that for hours upon hours every day, listening so much more carefully, trying to, to listen through the fog to hear what the message is, your brain literally gets tired of trying to sustain that degree of concentration. And it's also on the flip side, because subconsciously you assume that if everybody, if you're having trouble hearing them in the same way, then they must be having trouble hearing you. So you're more likely to talk louder and to force yourself to try harder, thinking like you can yell through the computer screen or something to make sure they can hear you okay. So then you end up pushing harder from your throat and straining your voice muscles your speech muscles. So your ears are tired, your brain is tired, and your throat is tired. You are physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausted by the end of the day. Zoom fatigue is real. So just a slight upgrade in your equipment will make such a huge difference. Now, a lot of people ask me for recommendations on equipment. I don't want to give a specific model because there's so many different factors involved, but I will tell you my uh, four steps for selecting equipment. Okay, here's the four, step, the four steps for trying to figure out which one is the right piece for you. Number one, start with a reputable brand. So there's a lot of brands like uh, Plantronics, Logitech, 
um, if you want to go uh, Blue Yeti. Mine is a Shure, S-H-U-R-E, but those are more uh, high tech, often used for singers and podcasters, more uh, high performance usage. Uh, you can go with them, but again, they're more expensive, not necessary. You can go with, let's see, or some of the other ones, Jabra is another one, Plantronics, I think I mentioned, Audio Technica is another one. Any of those brands are a good start. Once you've, and, you know, if you go to Amazon, you're going to put in some filters so that you're not looking at the 47,000 different microphones that are available. So filter number one is the brand. Filter number two, minimum of four out of five stars in the user ratings. You do not want a three point whatever average or worse. Four point XXX out of five stars. And not just like 10 or 20 user ratings, you want hundreds or even a thousand ratings or more. You want to know that the vast majority of the population who has ever tried this loves it. So make sure you get really, really good ratings overall. Number three, filter number three is the price because you can get a really good headset for 50 bucks. You don't need to spend hundreds. I mean, you dropped $180 on your, I, on your AirPods, but you don't need to do that. And frankly, AirPods aren't great. They're okay. And depending on what machine you're using them with, sometimes they're better, sometimes they're worse. But often people sound like they're in a tunnel when they're using otherwise really expensive AirPods. At that point, drop $100 and get a really decent mic from one of those brands I mentioned. Um, and it can be a standalone mic or one of those headsets that has a little boom arm that comes down. Uh, either one is fine. It depends on what you want. And so once you've identified your price range, then the next the filter is availability because you got to look through whatever pops up from the first three filters. And you may realize that something that was otherwise really popular is on back order for the next six weeks. Well, that doesn't do you any good. So nix all of those. And one other thing, it's not really a filter because you'll have to look through it. It's not a, an official search filter by Amazon terms. But one thing that you do want to double check is what kind of connection does it have? Is it a Bluetooth wireless connection? Uh, is it something that connects by USB? Is it something that's analog, which means one of those little pin indicate um, jacks, like most old um, I smartphones had, like most laptops still tend to have just, you know, the little teeny weeny pin that plugs in, that's an analog jack. Um, or if it's a higher end like this one, um, it may have an XLR cable. So it does not even, it's one of those big fat round, like the size of a quarter uh, jacks that's got three pins in it. And then it won't even plug into your computer. It has to go into a separate interface and then into your computer. I learned that one the hard way. Tell me about something I was not happy to discover when I ordered this great big piece of equipment and realized I couldn't plug it in. Surprise. Yes. Note to self, check out what kind of connection it has and make sure you have the right equipment. You should not need to do that. You should be able to find something with a USB connector that works great. Then, of course, once you get this nice piece of equipment, you want to make sure that you know how to use it correctly. So A, read the instructions. B, see if you can go to YouTube and do a little search for a tutorial because somebody will show you how to use it. And what I mean by that is little things like, um, depending on the size and shape of the microphone, is it something where you need to talk directly into it? Like as if you were pointing the, the trumpet at your mouth and talk into that, into the head, directly into the cone of the microphone? Or would you hold it upright like the side of an ice cream cone? And do you need to talk into the side? And if so, which side? Is there a little blue light somewhere in, deep inside that is telling you this side works, the other side does not? Or is it about the distance? Typically, if you hold your, your hand up and make sort of the hang 10 hand signal with your just your thumb and your pinky sticking out, for a standalone mic, often that's considered the best distance. Maybe six, eight inches away from your face is where you're going to get optimum pickup. So if you have your microphone on a little tripod, but it's 18 inches away from your face, then it's going to sound very different and it's barely going to pick up. So you spent all this money and it's not working for you. Even this mic right now, it's about that distance, about six inches from my face. But if I push it back, okay, now it's about 14, 16 inches away from me. You can hear the difference, can't you? Huge difference. Now it's the equivalent of sitting on top of my desk. Now I've pulled the arm back and it's right in front of me. So, you know, do you need to buy a little boom arm, something to clamp onto the desk or on the floor to make sure that it's in the right place? And then the next one is once you have um, gotten that, you also wanna make sure that it's not just in the right position, 
for optimum sound, but you want to make sure, especially if you do buy one of those headsets with a boom arm, that you want to put it someplace where it's not hearing you breathe. This is part of the challenge that a lot of times people uh, with the headsets, you hear the like, and it's really uncomfortable, really awkward, or as they're talking, they're popping their P's and touching their T's. They're, it's too much um, the plosives, too much aspiration into the microphone. So you need to figure out how far above your mouth or how far below your mouth towards your chin. You need to angle it to make sure that it's not getting all that distortion or all those unpleasant sounds along with it. Okay, so that's your equipment. That's the harder one. So tip number one, upgrade your tech. Do not default to using whatever comes in your laptop or in your desktop. It simply isn't good enough. Get a couple of, uh, get somebody else on the line with you to do a test and say, what if I plug this in? What if I shift and try this sound instead? How is it? Or for that matter, open up a Zoom or a FaceTime or whatever kind of video with yourself and just record yourself switching, okay, toggling between the embedded versus this mic versus if I plug in my, my regular earbuds that are wired versus this upgrade, how different is the sound? You need to hear what everybody else will hear. It is a occasionally rude awakening, but once you know, you are fully in power from there. All right, tip number two, you need to set the tone. And I don't mean just the tone of the sound as far as the equipment is concerned, but the fact is people feed off your energy. When you're talking, if you are trying to get people to pay attention and to be energized about something or to take something really seriously, you have to project that energy in the way that you talk. Most people kind of flip it on and they go, okay, uh, let's see, let's look at topic number one. We're going to go through the slides and the agenda items. And, uh, you know, this is really important over here. So we want to make sure we, but, oh my gosh, it's painful. It just, and the, you know, if something's serious, you need to come across as serious. If it's positive, you need to sound positive. People will interpret how you feel and what you think about what you're saying from the sound of your voice. And then that is their first instinct about how they brace themselves to receive. That, cre that becomes their first filter for how they receive what you're about to say. So you set the tone and a pushback that I hear sometimes as well, but you know, the stuff that I have to, that I have to, to share in these meetings isn't always so exciting. It's not about exciting. The question is, is it important? Because if it's important, then people need to hear that in your voice. So the energy should reflect the importance of the content. If you don't think it's important, I got news for you. Take it off the agenda. Don't waste people's time. Send them an email with three bullets or something to summarize what you would have said and let everybody go about their business. The final tip on how to sound awesome on audio or on video is to avoid certain vocal pitfalls, specifically vocal fry and upspeak. Now, if you've seen any of my other trainings and, and if you've seen my TED talk, you know what these things are, but vocal fry is that habit that a lot of people use like I'm using right now. It has to do with not enough breath support, not enough air, but they're just kind of creaking their way through what they're saying. And the issue is that without enough air, you are not allowing your vocal cords to vibrate fully. It's like not having enough gas in the engine of your car. So it's just kind of sputtering before it comes to a complete stop. And frankly, it's not good for you but you need to make sure that you're breathing enough that you're not kind of trailing off at the ends of your sentences. Even though you may start okay, then it kind of fries out at the end because you're not sure where you're going. Or maybe your brain is still moving on to the next topic, even though you're not done actually verbalizing it yet. Overall, it's just unpleasant. It sounds disinterested. And that goes back to the previous point about what kind of energy you're projecting. It sounds like you've changed your mind. Like maybe you were sure in the beginning and now you're not so sure about it anymore. Or otherwise, they're just really kind of hesitant, maybe a little intimidated by them. Or just that you're really tired, didn't sleep much last night, or that you've been smoking two packs a day since you were six. Whatever it is, none of it's good. People want to hear a nice, clear, full voice. Regardless of what your natural voice is, high, low, in between, it needs to be the clearest version that you can manifest. 
and upspeak is that pattern when most people will allow their voice to go up at the ends of all their phrases and sentences like I'm doing right now. And you may think, number one, that you're either, that, oh, well, that's, you know, a young millennial, valley girl, female kind of a thing. I got news for you. It is something that men and women do just as frequently and that older and younger also do quite frequently. So while there are certain, you know, socialite groups of sorts for whom it may be kind of an, an in-crowd thing, a Kardashian kind of unifier, that is not the majority of the people. And it's certainly not you, I'm guessing, if you're listening to this in the first place. But the fact is you do most likely fall into it at certain points. Uh, like when you're listing things and you're thinking, okay, I got to talk about this and I have to talk about this and I have to talk about this you may slide into it. Or if you're a little intimidated or, or nervous about whatever you're talking to, to a particular group, you may not realize that you're inflecting what is kind of a tag question at the end. Like, is that okay? Right? You know? And that's a, your body and your, your mind betraying you saying, I'm seeking validation. Could you just tell me that it's okay, that I'm right, that you know? So make sure you put those vocal periods at the end. At the end of a statement, let your voice drop. That sounds stronger, sounds more authoritative. And when you are able to do that, it helps people buy into what you're saying. Again, going back to the previous point, people will feed off of that energy. If you sound confident, people will also feel confident in what you're saying. But if you sound unsure, then other people might have a hard time feeling like, does she really know what she's talking about? Is he really confident in this point or do we need to get another opinion? So making sure that you are aware, again, record it and go back, see what you actually do, not what you think you do, because everybody's wrong about what they think they do on far too many levels. So record yourself, go back and look for these. How's the quality of your sound? How is your energy? And are you falling into either one of those vocal pitfalls? If you can identify those and fix them, you will command the call, video, audio, and beyond. So, you know, if this was interesting to you and you'd like the full training, again, this is just one topic of an otherwise much, much longer and more involved um, training about how to master the virtual environment, how to project leadership authority and have confidence, presence, and influence on video, please do feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can drop me an email. You can go to the website, vocalimpactproductions.com and connect with me there, of course, on LinkedIn or anywhere else as well. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much once again for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And please leave me a five-star rating on iTunes in particular so we can help even more people increase their confidence, presence, and influence on video. And finally, of course, if you want to download my quick start guide to mastering the three Cs, command the room, or in this case, the screen, connect with the audience, and close the deal, please go to speakingtoinfluence.com. I'm Dr. Laura Sokola, and you're listening to Speaking to Influence, Communication Secrets of the C-Suite.